Welcome to this next episode of Locked In, and this episode we're going to be doing the next part in my gravel bike into a 90s mountain bike. I'm going to be putting on a dropper seat post on my Poseidon Redwood to add into its capability of a rigid 90s mountain bike. Also, hopefully I'll be able to finish up the brakes. If you've been watching this series, I basically added a short pull conversion arm to my TRP HYRD calipers. For some reason, I only installed one and I can't find the other, so I'm going to be taking the shorter lever arm off the front caliper, putting it on the rear to tighten up the rear braking to make it a little bit better, and then finishing up drop your seat post install and hopefully if I got enough time today and it's still light enough I'll be taking you out for a little bit of a spin to see what I initially think. I haven't ridden a dropper since my Poseidon X dropper post install but I didn't actually end up keeping that post just because it was a zero offset post and it basically put my saddle so far forward I just wasn't comfortable on the bike and it made my knees hurt because my fit was so drastically changed but we should be in good luck with this seat post. So I'll be touching base with you if there's any problems along the way but let's install this post. So I got the dropper seat post installed. It went off pretty much without a hitch. It installs like any other external dropper. The routing for the frame, as you saw me install it, is basically going through the other hole in the drive side. It sneaks out the bottom, then you go up. It's not exactly in perfect line with the routing on the dropper, so the cable kind of does have a bend in it, but it does feel pretty smooth and not restrictive. I was worried that it was gonna not feel great as the lever, but it seems to be working and functioning fine, as you saw. Even though it has this little kink here, it seems to work and function perfectly fine. And because this is a 27.2 drop, I did have to put a shim in there so that I can use this possibly on other bikes in the future. Running the cable, like I said, down there into the frame came out nice and the lever does feel pretty good. Now what I do need to do is still go through this bike and adjust it, but before I do that, so I finally got the Allen wrenches to swap out this shorter lever arm from the front caliper to the back. So I'm going to do that right now and then finally button up the bike and then I can adjust all the handlebar setup and system to finalize this bike and finally hopefully get it out for a ride today. All right, and we got the brake lever arm switched. That was real finicky. I lost one of the bushings for a second, but we're back in business. So let's throw these on the bike and hopefully get this thing all buttoned up. All right, so we are all adjusted. I finally got the bars and everything pretty much set up to where I think they're gonna go. Obviously, I gotta do a full ride on it to see if it's definitely dialed in 100%, but it feels pretty good so far. The only thing that you notice in the footage is I did cut down my gear shift cable and my brake cable since I did go to a wider bar, but I had plenty of slack left, so I was able to tighten up the cabling in the front end to make it a little cleaner looking. Now, to be honest, I did put too much slack in the dropper cable, so eventually probably after riding this and seeing if I like it, shorten that down, but it is pretty bad and pretty long and a lot longer than I would normally run it. Now, the big thing, like I mentioned before with this is I'm just worried about my fit. It did push me about two centimeters closer to the stem. So it's gonna put my knees not in the ideal position of where I'd want them to be based on my fit numbers, but I'll have to see how I feel out on the trail and how it feels overall. This will effectively be shortening my stem kind of like everybody suggested to try out. So this will basically feel like I'm running about a 55 millimeter front stem instead of a 75 that I have currently on there based on my saddle to bar distance. So let's see if I got time to do a ride before it gets dark. All right. 
right, so I'm back from my ride. Not gonna lie, I've done two rides before the footage that you've just seen. They ended up being night rides, so obviously the footage wouldn't be great. So I'm gonna be going over a little bit of a review of just the basic setup that I've been doing, kind of just briefly going over it. I'm gonna be then explaining which items on this bike currently that I'm gonna be doing a review for. So make sure to turn notifications on and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So let's get into the differences from what you've originally seen it to what it is now. I have swapped out the tires from the Panaracer Raminos to the Panaracer Driver Pros. These are more of an XC tire, and I went from a 2.6 to a 2.4. I have been really liking these tires. They're better suited to the area that I ride in. And I wish I did get these in a 2.6 to add a little bit more volume because it has harshened up the ride a little bit because I couldn't go as supple. Because of the fully rigid setup that I'm running right now with the dropper and the rigid stem, I do feel the road a little bit more even though that's still a pretty big tire. Now the carbon bars and stem combo and fit wise have felt really good after basically readjusting my levers and shifters a few times since the last clip, but I think I've dialed it in perfectly. Going on to the dropper, I have used it and I really do like it. It works really, really well, but I haven't used it a ton in the terrain that I'm riding this bike in. And I've been keeping this Kai Venture wedgie bag on this bike ever since I've basically repainted it. It's been the perfect accompaniment to this bike to carry everything I possibly need. I can definitely put my saddlebag in here if I needed to, but the dropper post with it all the way down, it doesn't rub on the little baggie. So if I want to have a cleaner look or have extra space in here, I can throw that in. No problem, been really liking this setup as you can see it perfectly right here. Now let's get into what I'm going to be reviewing coming up on this channel and that you've been seeing on this review. I'm going to be doing all the fun components in their own kind of group review, as well as I will be doing a full review of the Kai Venture Wedgie. I have a Magic Shine 4500 lumen light that I have been currently testing and liking a lot. That will be coming to the review, as well as the dropper post itself. I am probably going to separate the Advent X cassette swap into its own video. It might not be in this exact series, just so that if people are looking for that specifically, they can find that exact video if they haven't been subscribed to my channel already. So if you have any questions or suggestions for this series, it has has extended way longer than I thought. I thought this was going to be a three, four parter and it's turning into a really long series, but I've been really enjoying it. And this is definitely a very different bike setup than it was originally. I will be doing a full review of the Poseidon Redwood as a flat bar bike as well. Coming forward when I get a few more miles on it and have tried a few different setups to make my final suggestions and review for that later down the line. So I hope you like that. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as well as you can support Locked In via my Spreadshirt store where I sell my Slow But Look Pro and my Is My Bike Okay merch as well as on Patreon where I offer one-on-one -on -one Zoom consultations every single month for my top two tier levels. And lastly, thanks for watching another episode of Locked In.